solve the problem, to clean the waters, to ensure that at the, at the very least that this, uh, you know, th that there's no more toxic chemicals that end up in our in our drinking water. And I yield. Thank you. The chair recognizes Congressman Kildy for five minutes of questioning. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing and for your leadership on this issue. And to the witnesses, thank you for your uh, testimony. And I just need to sort of get something off my chest. Um, let's not be afraid of a movie. We should be afraid of the story that that movie tells. So I know it's fun and maybe sport for some on the other side to want to attack anyone who's in the business of telling these important stories. But I will tell you one thing. As a guy who represents a community that was poisoned and overlooked, I'll take help from anyone who will step up and help tell this story to the American people. And when I needed help in Flint, Michigan, a lot of my friends here helped, Mark Ruffalo showed up in Flint, Michigan to help bring attention to that crisis. So Mark, keep doing what you're doing. Because the way we change policy is by informing people of what policy that's currently in place is doing to them. And right now, the policy that's in place in this country is poisoning people. And it's our responsibility to do something about it. So don't be afraid of a movie. And don't judge the movie by just watching the trailer, by the way. So get that off my chest. Um, but it's important to note that one of the comments that was made from the gentleman on the other side who, who is no longer in the room is that we shouldn't say we're not doing anything because we have all these provisions in the NDAA and then after a comma, but we shouldn't regulate this until the science tells us. The language we have in the NDA allows us to regulate it. So Mr. Faber, I wonder if you could just address what it would mean specifically to list PFAS under CERCLA and what that process looks like. Is it a ban? How does it actually work? Thank, thank you for the question. This is a really important question because there is a mistaken uh, assumption that designating PFAS as a hazardous substance would be a de facto ban. That is simply not true. CERCLA is a cleanup statute. It does not regulate chemicals. When we regulate chemicals, we regulate chemicals under, the, under TSCA, which we updated three years ago. When we regulate medical devices, we regulate them under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act. We do not regulate them under CERCLA. CERCLA only regulates releases of toxic chemicals and only applies when a site is so contaminated that it has to be cleaned up. So that's a, a really important, and, and I'll just add one quick point on that, which is that there are hundreds and hundreds of chemicals that have been designated as hazardous substances under CERCLA. 761 of those have been designated as hazardous substances. Do you know how many of those are still being used in commerce today? 599. They're used in all sorts of things. 339 of them are produced at very high volumes. So to your point, Mr. Kildee, a hazardous substance designation is not, not a ban. It simply requires the cleanup of the most contaminated sites, and it ensures that the polluters who knowingly contributed to these, this worldwide contamination pay their fair share of the cleanup costs. Thank you. If you could also comment, uh, there's this discussion, and, and I have to point out, Mr. Joyce, you echoed something we heard in a previous hearing, that, um, that the science is incomplete in order to come to any conclusion. Uh, I don't know when there's enough science, but just looking at the C8 study, and I see Mr. Blatt and Bucky here, uh, Bucky Bailey, one of the heroes of the story in Parkersburg, at least at the time, and maybe still, the most exhaustive human health study ever conducted, there's pretty solid science that says, says this is bad stuff and we ought to protect people from it. Isn't that right, Mr. Faber? That's right. We, again, we reviewed the, the medical records and blood work of 70,000 people. Imagine what it would take to get 70,000 people to donate their blood so that independent scientists could assess whether there was indeed a link between PFOA and cancer and other serious health effects. But that's not all. There have been 
hundreds of additional peer-reviewed studies done by EPA, CDC, by others, but the most important source of information about the threats posed by these chemicals comes from the industry itself. The reason we know that these chemicals cause cancer and other serious health problems is because we've seen it on DuPont and 3M letterhead. Yeah. We know because they knew. We know because they knew in the 1950s that this stuff built up in our blood, and in the 1960s that it was toxic, and then in the 1970s it was poisoning their own workers, and in the 1980s it was poisoning their neighbors, and they never told anyone. They didn't tell their workers, they didn't tell their communities, and most of all, they didn't tell the EPA. And then when they did tell EPA, EPA did nothing. EPA has known since 2001, and they have done nothing. And that's why it's so important, as Mr. Keller said, that Congress has finally, in 2019, almost 20 years after EPA first found out about this, finally saying we need to reduce releases of PFAS, we need to end the use of PFAS in food packaging, and we need to clean up this mess. We need to, when, when D, we need to tell DOD, when, as Mr. Favor said, that when we find high levels of contamination, that it's their responsibility to clean up the mess they've created over the decades. Mr. Chairman, if I could just close, and I know I'm going over my time, but there is a question before Congress right now on this. And so I, I was glad to hear my colleague on the other side mention the NDAA provisions. There's an organized effort right now to have those provisions taken out of the NDAA in its final uh, pr uh, form. We work really hard in the House, in a bipartisan way very often, to get those provisions included. This is a chance to get real protection to the President's desk, signed and put into law, not just a get-well card to people who are facing poisoning or communities that are facing poisoning, but something tangible. So for those of you that want to see something done, the moment is right now. Speak up. I yield back. Thank you.